shot on this? Fine. Just remember, we're going to sit in Toronto and put this all together and make a real television show out of it. Where's the focus, Doug? Yeah, good idea. <laughs> in five, four, three, focus two. They're being cruel. They're getting you. <laughs> they are, indeed. Meg Ryan is with us. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Thank you. And tell you how touching, wonderful, and radiant you are as Sally in When Harry Met Sally. Look at all those adverbs. What are we together. going to do with them, Meg? Not that you haven't heard them before. I <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. That's really I good. I did. I liked it very much, as a matter of truth. And I think it's wonderful to be sitting with you. People have been talking about Rob Reiner and what the movie means to him and how fortunate for Rob Reiner and Andy Scheinman that they met Nora Ephron. Yeah. And we must talk about the screenplay. Yeah. An actor without words has nothing you know, to say. It's, it, the, the truth is a lot of times an actor's job in Hollywood is, is to make stuff that doesn't work, work. And this thing works on the page, so it can't, I mean, it's, it's ter it is so well written that you don't, you know, all, half your work is done for you. Meg, did you meet Nora Ephron? Yeah. Spent, spent time with her? Mm -hmm. What did mm -hmm. you think? What was the first meeting like? Where'd you meet? We met, I think we met when she came to L.A. on one of these read-throughs, and then I think we had lunch a couple times. And uh, she's just, she has a way of putting things that you, she, she has a way of deadpan putting statements about these outrageous things, and she deadpans them, and it's, it's just so funny. And it, it's like you're always getting caught off guard by her. She's a truly, truly brilliant, a really smart, wonderful, intelligent woman. People are talking about your work in the movie and Billy Crystal, Billy Crystal's longtime friendship with Rob mm -hmm. Reiner. And I teased Rob Reiner and said, hold it, did you offer it to Richard Dreyfuss? I mean, why did you make Billy wait? Saying, I didn't want to offer it to you in friendship, and I had to see other people, oh. but I always wanted you to do it. And watching your work and seeing the dramatic and comedic skill, which we have seen before, but never as you being the focal point right. of the movie. I thought, well, Meg Ryan spent a lot of time with Marty Short, Eugene Levy, John Candy. She's worked with some of the best, and you probably have an honorary Maple Leaf on your cheek. For like SCTV? All of them. I know, I, I do. I feel like I'm like the, the comedy babe. You know, you, but this time I get to be funny, which is you the do. difference. You do. Yeah. Now this time I'm not the item. I'm like uh, somebody who like who, who actually participates in the film. There's, some, there's <laughs> very so exciting. many extraordinary moments in, in When Harry Met Sally, and I was thinking of some of the others that you've had in a line that we all like in Inner Space when Dennis Quaid's character had entered your body and you were, I think you delivered the line to Marty, I'm not sure now. And you say, he's playing our song. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you sweet. made it so romantic and so touching in such a bizarre situation. Yeah, yeah. That, one that was a hard role. How it's was a hard, it hard role? Make? Because there was nothing really to do with it. You know, I mean, there's, there's the, the, like the, the central relationship of the movie was really his and his. And his you know, and, uh, and I kind of came along for the, for the ride. Which is, you know, I think it's fair for a lot of a lot of films, and that's why this movie, I think, har it, it goes back, it harkens back to a lot of films from the '30s and the '40s because this woman is somebody who is entirely of her, she's of her own ilk. She's funny and she's she's smart, she's witty, she's she's self-contained in, in in a lot of uh, very real ways, which I think that those women were back then, and they were written in, a, in an intelligent way. This mo this movie was written intelligently. We also have to point out that you and Billy Crystal received some extraordinary support from Carrie Fisher yeah. and Bruno Kirby. Were you and Carrie friends before this movie? No, but but she sometimes leaves messages on my mach my service saying, you know, Anything this you is this repeat? is your sidekick <laughs> <laughs> calling up. She's just I wish she was here because she is, you know, a remarkable personality. And I take it that either before filming Harry and Sally, you had read postcards from the edge or after filming uh -huh. you thought I'm going to read this. Uh-huh. I oh, know I read it before. Because I, I think her voice, her, uh, you know, like her literary voice is something that's really unique. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's got it. She's, we sat around singing show tunes at the top of our lungs <laughs> in between takes. All, all the worst songs we'd ever heard, the worst lyrics we'd ever known, we sang. But not Surrey with the Fringe on top. No, Surrey with the Fringe on top. You did that one, too? was one of them. And also, MacArthur Park is melting in the dark, or whatever. I don't, I don't even know the words to it. Did she knows all the words, though. She, she's a Broadway baby. Yes, yeah, she's she a Broadway baby. She was performing on stage at 13. Yeah, that's right. Yes, I remember when she stopped in Toronto at the Royal Alexander Theatre and doing Irene with her mother. Oh, oh she did really? Irene. 
Yeah, and before that she so worked no in London on stage. So no wonder she knew. Sure. Kids got vocal cords. Uh -huh. Did anybody buy a singing machine at the end of the movie? Or did anybody get the singing machine out of the movie? I'll have to ask about that. I don't know. Did they let you keep your clothes? Some of them, yeah. Yeah. Just the good stuff. Just the good stuff. The updated stuff. Mm -hmm. You didn't keep anything from the university <laughs> campus scene, right? No, I can and, and the wig gone. The wig is gone? Yeah, I know. It's, what it are you going to do when you record well, your album? <laughs> Meg, you're going to need it. <laughs> it's, for, it's like entirely aerodynamic. <laughs> it's perfectly, like the wind hit it just so I would kind of take off. I want to make a comment about your shoes and socks. Oh, you do? Yeah, I do. Why? Well, the thing, I, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. You got great legs. You got to flaunt them. <laughs> Thank you. I saw them in the movie. <laughs> You're not fooling us. And Marty Short said you should see her in a bathing suit around the pool. How did he see me in a bathing suit around the pool? Telescopic lens, Meg. Oh God. You well, know those Canadians. There's a, yeah, those Canadians, those crazy minds. guys. He's a great guy. I miss Isn't him. He? He's, I miss that guy. Well, you call him when you get home. Yeah, okay. Say hello to Marty and Nancy. Uh, can I say hello to Marty for you? You may indeed. All right. John Candy, Rose. Eugene Levy is in Toronto with his wife Debbie, so I'll say hello to him for you. All right, good. It's good to see you. All right, nice to see Can't you. Can't wait nice to, see to meet Joe you. Joe versus the volcano. Yeah, it's going to be good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Meg Ryan. <laughs> really nice talking to you. It's a pleasure meeting you. <laughs>